Hi, welcome to Inky Fingerprints, the YouTube channel for Diane Horn. That's me. Today I'm going to demonstrate for you a non-objective, limited palette, alcohol ink painting. Um, I'm limiting my palette to three colors, a green, a red, and a yellow. And I like to do this because I can get very carried away with the colors. This way I have control over the colors and I know what's going to blend with what. This is a 7 inch piece of Yupo paper, which is a synthetic paper that's non-porous. I start by putting a little alcohol on the paper as demonstrated and then I put some ink on. The ink is in the alcohol and I'm just giving a minute, uh, it a minute or two to spread itself, seed itself in the alcohol. I use an airbrush because it gives me much better control than some of the other tools that are available. Uh, people have used straws, sometimes they just blow, sometimes you just tilt the paper. I've done all of those things and I still do all of those things, but for the bulk of my work I use my airbrush. The airbrush gives me control because I can determine with the little lever how much air I flow in at any given time. So when I'm doing long, smooth strokes like this, I can put the air on high. When I want this, these long strokes, I hold the airbrush at an angle to the paper so it doesn't hit it face on. When you do that, if you hold it too close and you hit it with a burst of air, a long burst of air, you get a totally different effect. That's a little bit more of the green. What I want to do first of all, before I do anything else, is I want to cover the entire piece of paper with the ink. I like this ink this color because it breaks down into other colors. As you can see looking at it, there's traces of blue, a little bit of brown, then of course the green, and it's not, uh, it's a warm green is what I want to say. It's a warm green, it's not a cold blue green. So I'm just spreading the ink, a little more alcohol. Now I'm adding in the cranberry. As you can see, this is a very deep, rich wine color. And it also makes beautiful shapes and shades right within it. And it blends very nicely with this green. Spreading. You can see I've covered a lot of the paper already. I'm going to put red on the other side now. Cranberry red. When you're playing around, use whatever colors appeal to you. If you're a beginner, I would suggest that you use cheaper paper than the UPO to learn with and to learn the palette, the colors of, of each, sh each shading within each color. It's fun to learn, so, you know, go ahead. Oh, little snake getting away with, away from me there. I'm using long bursts of air and making streaks with the, with the ink. See those beautiful outlines? That's one of the things I love about the ink. I love the inks that will do that. Not all, not all shades will do that. Some are very stable within their color. Others show their blend. Green again. I'm getting to the point where the canvas is covered. color red and green are blending together. It's 
just spreading the ink. Now I'm going in and using little bursts to refine the shapes a bit. There's white spaces and I, I'm not fond of white spaces. I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, what does it need? When I'm doing a non-objective composition, all that really means is that I don't have any forethought about what it will end up being. My concentration is on creating atmosphere and blending colors. Now I'm taking some alcohol in an eyedropper. The eyedropper I use has a little bulge in the very tip and it makes very nice dots, but only if I hold the dropper itself upright, which is why you can't actually see me doing the work because I need to hold it upright. But you can see the alcohol drops forming rings. I'm kind of playing at this point. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep these or not. Now I've used a lot of alcohol up to this point. And that has a tendency to dull out the colors. It dilutes them. If you want to stay true to the color, if you want deep color, you have to use less alcohol. There we go. Forming some texture. Still not sure exactly what I want to do here, so I'm still playing. Now I'm going to add a third color. I'm going to add a more golden yellow. Shake it out, get it, spread it fast. I want the yellow to be an accent, but as I'm looking at this, mm, I'm not satisfied. The, the green and the purple, purple red are just not vivid enough. And I'm not finding a focal point. You can be non-objective, but it's still a good idea to have some place for your eye to rest on. All right, I'm adding more cranberry. There's a lot of alcohol on that paper, which is why I'm, at this moment I'm not adding any more. Kind of letting the red form shapes. blowing the ink back onto the paper so it doesn't just drip off the edge. I'm happier with the colors now that the golden yellow has been added. It gives it the kind of contrast I want. A little more green, I think that is, yeah. The circles that I'm making with the airbrush create a kind of flowery effect. Using the airbrush also helps to dry the paint. 
It helps to evaporate the alcohol off of the paper. A little more yellow. More circles. I'm holding the airbrush about an eighth of an inch off of the paper. You try not to drag the airbrush because you'll bend the needle. You don't want to do that to your airbrush. If you do alcoholing, the airbrush is your best friend. As you can see, it's forming a lot of internal shapes. I'm still not seeing my focal point. So I think that's my aim here is just to find it. Some place for the eye to rest. When you're doing a composition, you want to pay attention to what the colors do. For example, when you see red, your eye wants to find green. So if you want to move the eye around the canvas, put your green in the center and then put red around the edges. It'll make your eye search so that you get the essence of the entire canvas. Still looking for the focal point, still isn't there. Oh, I like that little flowery effect down in that corner. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it. Set like three or four layers of the green paint. Okay. I think I know what I need. I think what this needs to give it a focal point is a metallic ink. Now the question is, do I use copper or brass? I definitely don't want silver. I've decided I'm gonna use the brass. Back on with the gloves. When I use a metallic ink, such as brass, uh, Pinata brass, by the way, Pinata is a Jacquard brand, and it's a beautiful metallic ink but it's a little heavier than your standard color inks. So when I use that, I use a solution of 99% alcohol with a few drops of glycerin in it, and that helps the metallic ink to move more freely. <coughs> I'm shaking up the metallic right now. They come with a little BB or something in the bottle so that you can mix it up, because they do separate deciding where to put it. Okay, we want a focal point. Let's put it there. Now I'm gonna move it with the airbrush. Oh, yes. I don't want to have too much solid brass in there. I want it to spread out to the edges, make a lacy edge on the shapes. But that yellow in the center there 
has an incredible gloss of, of, the, of the brass. And it's forming even as we're, we're sitting here talking. A little bit more. I make a habit of putting the lid back on the brass as soon as I take it off because they dry out a little faster than the other inks do. go. I'm much happier with this composition now. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I haven't given this a name. Maybe you can suggest some. Feel free to leave comments. Contact me and let me know what you'd like to see demonstrated and I'll be happy to do it for you. There we go, completed. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. I have many more videos coming up for you. Thanks again.